Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to our thriving little village in Farthest Frontier. Now previously, I gotta admit it, I struggled against food shortages that came very close to causing hunger and starvation. But, we did just manage to narrowly avoid that while our fields were undergoing maintenance and being rejuvenated. The main thing though is that nobody died, at least not from hunger anyway. And we've now reached Tier 3 with our town center, allowing the upgrade of several buildings such as the root cellars to better preserve our food and our trading post. And a big haul that we brought in in the last episode at that trading post meant we got a huge cash injection that we're now putting into decorations and more advanced buildings, which is going to pave the way for our glorious expansion into the mining industry. So here we are, right where we left off at the end of the last episode. About 30 seconds have passed so that I could just do... A few little things like plant different things and also um, update the farms, which I'll get to in just a moment. But I wanted to just address our lovely looking trading post, upgraded now fully to tier 2. Looking damn fine, ringing the bells far and wide at the clock tower to let everyone know that we're open for business. Alright, so, also just want to address that some people in the comments mentioned that you can actually press F4 if you want to get rid of the icons. You can actually get a more detailed view and then a less detailed view i.e. no view at all. And the same is true for people. If you want a more detailed view, we press F3, and then we can see their name, their health, what they're doing, and what they're carrying. Press F3 again, and you won't see anything. Press it one more time, and you'll just see the health bars in case any of them are damaged, and that's kind of the default. So I'll leave it on default for a little while, but you might see me flicking through them every now and then. I think most of the time I'm looking inside of the town, I'll probably keep this off, and then most of the time when I'm looking outside the town, I'll probably turn it back on to see what different deposits are lying around. So you may remember, speaking of deposits, that there is a huge vein of iron here, here, some gold all up this mountain, and then iron and iron again, and iron here, and iron here. So it is crazy the amount of deposits that are all localized into one big area. So what I'm going to be doing, obviously, is relocating a temporary shelter closer over to there, and then getting work on extracting these resources this episode. I've never done gold before, so it's going to be interesting to see. Like, obviously, we smelt that, and we just get direct cash, basically, uh, that can be used as the trader and different things. So, looking forward to that. Now, in between episodes, just really quickly, I've also just added a few extra decorations along different pathways, mostly just trees and things like that, just to spruce in the place up. Is that the right word? I'm going with it for now. Anyways... With our four farms, I thought I would just quickly go over some of the changes I made to them. So effect effectively, these two fields are going to be fallow, I think, for the next two years, really. And then these two ones are going to bear the brunt of production, and then we're going to rotate and hopefully bring up the fertility of everything. So here, we're making leeks, carrots, wheat. Fertility is at 52, so fairly low. And then we're going to use two lots of clover, and hopefully we can bring that fertility up another 10% at least. It could go all the way up by 20%, possibly, uh, in our third year. And then down here, similar sort of situation. This one actually has... Uh, just looking at it again, we probably don't have as many problems with the weeds. Maybe I'll just do clover here. <laughs> Already changing it. Uh, and do we have room for... No, okay. Yeah, that's fine. So just bring the fertility up even further after a couple of years. Weeds is at 5%, so I think it's going to be fine. The weed level on this one, this is our newest field, so it's still really high. So we're going to be working on that right now. And also adding a little bit of extra fertility in there and clearing out more and more weeds. And then down here, the final one. At the moment, it's currently gathering wheat. 1,540 have been planted. We're probably going to get about 50% of that back with the uh, whatever yield we end up do getting. And we can check on that a bit later. But then, of course, we're going to go into field maintenance, try to reduce down the weeds that's at 43% here, and then add a little bit of clover in there to bring up the fertility. And then we'll have to readdress things. Once fertility comes back up to around 70%, then I can get a bit more of a regular flow going. Um, and we can always add more fields to help with that. Alright, so that's pretty much where we've left off. Just really quickly, we have 171 population, 2 months of food in the bank. We of course have 16 laborers not doing anything, 24 builders all assigned to various jobs. Mostly just improving decorations, improving the roads and things like that. I think a huge bottleneck that I have is still resource production We're short for building, construction resources that is. So I want to get more planks and more stone on the go. We explored out here in the last episode, but I didn't actually look at it. There is a big load of stone around this area. So, and there's a shoal of fish there, a shoal of fish there, and a shoal of fish there. So these fisheries could actually just support the temporary shelter and things out here. I think if they deliver the fish right here, maybe we'll put a smokehouse out here. So it's a little bit of an isolated industry area for gathering stone and gathering fish and things like that. And when the stone is all gone, we could switch to wood, or we could just bring all that food back in-house, as it were. Alrighty. 
So let's just let time play then, see how things are going. Um, so I've actually got a list of things to do as well, but because all our builders are currently doing stuff, we're just going to wait until they kind of finish, basically, and then we can start assigning new tasks and keep an eye on what's going on. Uh, but some of the stuff I want to do is set up all that fishing, you know, check over those farms again, just keep an eye on them every couple of years, and then get the iron and gold mines up and running, start getting the coal mine that's far to the south, maybe another doctor, get some extra, um... What's it called? Put some pots and things, get some extra stuff going into the traders so we can make a little bit of extra money. And then soon we should be also seeing our barn. We're just up to 10 out of 13 herd size in total. Um, let's just list that at 13 there. I don't know why that allows you to go up to 16 when it says 13. And then hopefully everything after that I think will just start to be slaughtered. Every you know year we should get two new calves born and then the two older ones will get slaughtered and we should start actually generating meat at this building because currently it's just been milk and we've been feeding them so a long big long investment but it should should start to pay off soon enough um, and that's basically everything I want to get done we also need a rat catcher I meant to put one out here and I forgot we have two granaries and um, you know once you get to a certain size basically usually around tier 3 you start seeing rats and squalor kind of rise and you need to get a rat catcher you have to pay monthly to have that kind of as a service and ideally you want to have it on your markets and on your food storage buildings because you can just lose food to rats and it obviously spreads disease as well oh and the other thing then the very last thing would be having extra transporters we currently have one building with two wagons we should probably have like three really for the size we are especially if we're going to start going out and getting that mining industry set up and stuff like that all right, looking good. Let's just check over the professions. So still 24 out of 24. So until these kind of trees... Look at that. It's starting to look really good, actually. The trees getting planted along this line. Have a bit of a Roman name to these. We call it the Via Flaminia. That leads into the second city here. The second little village. Uh, we've also got our pub being placed down at the moment as well. Looking good. Coming along nicely. The frame is in place. Of course, we have our little defenses. And we have our hunter out here. So things are good. Things are good. Our... The shortages are over. It's going to be nothing but bliss from here on out. I have no doubt. Really, I want to get some more houses going soon as well. This farm, by the way, is scheduled to have some fertilizer dropped on it. And I think we actually probably need another compost um, building. Because this guy has to go really far to collect all the way out here. So I might put another one out this way. Because the farms actually add, the barn adds negative desirability. So having another compost yard here wouldn't be a bad idea. They could collect from this side of the town dump it on the farms if they need to, that sort of thing. You sort of slow down the rate at which it'll pile up, though, if you know what I mean. Until you get to a certain size, I guess, and then they both kind of become a bit more even. So just to check over these deep veins yet again, we have 5,000 iron there, 300 there, 4,000 there, 4,000 gold, 1,100 gold, 3,200 iron, and those two numbers are the same. They must be the same vein. And then this one here. Unless they are separate and they have the exact same amount, which would be crazy. And then another 5... Th it's madness. It's like 20,000 iron here and like 6,000 gold or something. It's just crazy. I just think that's so crazy. But it's interesting. I haven't found any coal other than just that 300 in one deposit. So maybe we'll just have to kind of get used to trading for coal with gold, you know, a little bit or something. I don't know. Um, we can obviously have charcoal kilns that are burning firewood to, to get a little bit of excess coal out that way. All right, two new villagers born. Congratulations. Um, I reckon we're going to have another sawmill now. We've got 445 logs currently. So let's just get another sawmill because I know that I'm going to be short for planks. There's a lot of industrial buildings we want to build now that we're at tier 3. And a lot of them cost planks. And a lot of upgrades that we want to do too. So let's go resources. Another saw pit. Might end up moving this eventually. And we'll start upgrading these as well so they get... Um, what do they get? An increased... Heavy tools can be used. Item production speed increase and additional workers. So what's the profession rate? Excuse me, we're at 22 out of 24 builders active. Just down to 21. Let's prioritize this building. So let's get through the list now that people are kind of doing their jobs and uh, we're freeing up some workforce. So like I said, in here we cr Whoops. I don't know what I just clicked. I'm sorry about that noise, by the way. I know it triggers some people, the noise. That, I mean, you can turn down the effect volume. There's actually a bug where it turns down everything. So that's it's not very useful right now. But hopefully in a patch, they can let us turn things down separately a bit more. Um, anyways, so we have 115 pots that we can start adding in here. 
So let's just go... Let's add 150 in total, right? So that leaves us with 15. By the way, having an excess of luxury goods means you actually make more money. Now, I don't think our houses will. Let me just check those. No, they probably will, actually, because... If you provide them with candles and you provide them with pottery, you get a little bit more out of the homestead. So people have been asking, how are you making so much money? And we obviously have two markets that have been upgraded. I traded early to get bricks and used 50 bricks on each one to upgrade them into tier 2 markets, which basically doubles the income they normally make. So it's really beneficial long term to do that. Um, the other thing is our homesteads are making 35 income. So separate to the markets, the homesteads are also generating income. And a tooltip in between episodes or on the loading screen actually says, if you provide luxury goods, houses provide more income. So we don't get to see a direct breakdown of where they get their income from or how much we're getting per household. But overall, providing them with pottery, which we are at the moment, seems to be giving us quite a decent amount of money from them. It's also worth mentioning, I don't have much in the way of services or defenses. I have three watchtowers. That's it. So, a little vulnerable, but obviously, things I've been managing the attacks just fine as long as we bring our hunters in. However, the next one's probably going to be a lot bigger, seeing as the last one was about 22, I think, in size. Maybe the next one will be about 30, possibly even 40. So, at that point, we really want to have a barracks. So, I'm going to be working towards getting that, and then having an excess of population, forging weapons, and uh, garrisoning the barracks so that we can send them around to troubled areas when they need to be. Let's just remove this flag. I don't think anything's moving out to it. It's one of the carts, surely, that's been told to move there, but they're not actually doing it. Sorry, wrong button. I can't click anything today. I don't know what's going on. There we go. Just tell that to move there. Is that that same flag? Yeah, that was their flag. Right, okay, weird. All right, anyways, let's just check the professions. All right, we're down to 13 builders now, so that's good. So, yeah, let's start addressing this area up here. So, we'll move this building slightly out this way. We'll move this building somewhere far back here. And then we'll start. We have to flatten the, ter the terrain in order to actually harvest these materials. Because if you have a look, if you want to just put the gold mine down here, it's going to say slope too steep. Because we are on a big angular hill. So we need to get the flatten tool and basically just flatten a good chunk. And this is so, such a steep hill, I imagine that it probably wants us to do it twice. So we'll do it once there. And then just do another one like here. And that should allow us to start getting iron and gold together. Ah, the other thing then would be setting up the fishing down this way. So, always good to get that little bit of extra food coming in. Fishing shack. Right around to the left here. And then the other one a bit more far to the right. And then, there's all this stone out here. So we can extend the road out. Try to make it look somewhat organic. And kind of neat looking. Something like that, and we can then, once this road is done and these buildings are built, then we'll commission getting another temporary shelter set up and start harvesting some of this stone out here, because I'm desperate for it. And we can start getting the trees out here, too. Actually, you know what? We could move this temporary shelter out that way. Oh, no, actually, this is, sorry, this is for the industry. I got confused. I meant the work camp. We could move the work camp uh, out to the right. Keep the temporary shelter out here for these guys. So, yeah, just put that back. Kind of where it was. This is the building I was thinking of. Sorry. So yeah, the work camp, right? They get stone and they get wood, depending. There's both out here, so we'll just move it out this way. Why not? Just trying to think. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Good. Alrighty. Let's let time play again. Alright, we'll speed things up a bit. Some of our different buildings can still upgrade, and we've moved yet even more berry bushes in there. Some people are saying, you know, you don't necessarily need a forager to do it. Just put it near a root cellar and then manually select to um, harvest it, like by selecting bushes. And just tell them to harvest it once they come in. I mean, I guess you could do that, but let's be honest, I make a lot of mistakes and I don't pay attention to a lot of things. So I think just having sort of automated in the background, having one person dedicated to foraging, I think that's good enough for me. Tech, I guess there's technically two. We might move that other one out soon enough. They're also gathering willow, so they're not a complete waste. Oh, we do have a rat catcher. Oh, right. I thought we didn't have one. So let's just do this. Can they get all three buildings in there? Yeah, there we go. The market, the granary, and the granary. Nice. So that rat catcher is good. It's actually tempting to... Oh, I guess we'll leave them where they are, but we'll build another one as well pretty soon. So let's have a look here. This area has been almost done. Our medium park just needs two more stone. We have 63 apparently in total. The pub is almost done at 14. 
and then 44 and 7. So this, see, construction material, I'm just struggling a lot to get it brought down here properly. I guess what we could do, just really quickly, we could do that trick and see who's carrying what, you know? This person's carrying 15 planks to this construction site, but this one needs 12. I guess that's why you need to be setting your priorities, you know? It would be nice if he just turned around now and delivered it here. So he's delivered it into there. That's always a big frustration for me, is the fact that they build everything simultaneously rather than... Oh, these houses have all just upgraded. So another big demand for planks. 6, 12, 18, 24. As they become homesteads now as well. And that's thanks to our desirability, pushing well above 30. And once the pub is down also, it's going to be another boost to desirability by like 10% or something. Kind of, yeah, it's really cool seeing the names. I might start adding in the people from the credits, people who are channel members, and just add their names over. Yeah, I think I'll do that at the end of this um, Let's Play. Uh, at the end of this episode, I'll just save it, go through everyone's names, and just add in as many people from the credits as possible. Try to make their names fit the game as well. You know, we had someone called Monkey SK, so I think I named them S. K. Monkey. So it's like you don't know their first name, and their last name is, you know, Mr. Monkey. Um, I don't know. It helps me a little bit, just with my, with my immersion in the game. If we can have um, names not like, you know, I don't know, Wallbang69 or something going around in our little medieval city. Alright, I guess we'll just speed up time. Things are looking good. We just ultimately need to get these different things built. So how's the flattening gone? Oh, it's actually done already. So let's just see if it's flat enough. Resource production. Gold. It's still a bit too sloopy, um, but yeah, we'll just try it again. I'll try this one. This one seems like it'll be okay. Yeah, this one's good now. All right, cool. Iron mine, done. And then we need to extend the road out this way to go all the way up to the temporary shelter. Something like that going to be kind of ugly looking actually, but whatever. Alright, the temporary shelter is, oh sorry, the work camp is set up down here. They're going to need their own temporary shelter to deliver them. Again, just in case you don't know, and I want to refresh people's memories on what this does. A temporary shelter basically is a warehouse for food. So food is going to get delivered out here so that when the people are working out here, they don't have to go too far to get fed. So I'm going to put it somewhere around here, if we can. Why can't I do that? Invalid placement. Well, excuse me. Alright, we'll go there. That way, the, even the fisheries should just come here to get their food, and then the mining camp will go here to get their food as well. So we've got these set to five stone and one wood. We'll just go a little bit further down and select right around here. And I'll just click harvest manually on that one. All right, good. So, two more livestock animals born. Excellent. Now, I've been getting some people telling me that this can be bugged, so we'll see what happens when we start next year getting slaughter, um, slaughtering animals. Slaughtering animals. God, I can't speak today. Basically, some people have been having another bug where it's like they're not being slaughtered, and it just says you're overpopulated, and you click slaughter, and it doesn't do anything, and you try to mess with it, it doesn't do anything. But a workaround could be setting up a second barn, so we'll see if we have to do that. I might build a second barn anyway, and if a trader comes along, maybe we could just buy more animals and ramp up the meat production pretty soon. Two more villagers emigrated, three were born. And we're now at year 16. How many, what do we have left in this deposit? Getting pretty low, 455. This one still has 2,600, so it's worth keeping all this in the same area. The pottery, etc. Um, speaking of, what else have we loaded up into here? So we need to add in a bit more honey. We'll bring this to 75 in total. 100 for tallow, 150 for pottery. Anything else we maybe need to bring in? The baskets, maybe 50 baskets. Oh, we're going to make a killing. Maybe some flour. Flour actually sells pretty well, but it doesn't last very long, so we'll just put 100 in there. And then we've got tons of vegetables and all, all sorts. Good, 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 good. So let's have a look at our profession, see who's not doing anything. 21 people building right now, 19 laborers. Okay. We could put more people on building again. They're still working on the cobbled roads out this way. 162 wood in that cart. What's in our other cart down here? 221. 218. It's good to see that they're actually using it. 
All right, yearly taxes collected, making 82 gold. And I think we've got a decent amount, a couple hundred in the uh, market itself. All right, everything looks looks to be going fine. I'm just waiting on really, you know, more builders to be available for us. I'm, I'm happy to have some laborers. They, of course, do move things around for you. So while it might seem like a lot of people might not be doing much, you know, they'll be moving goods back and forth between different places, especially when things are just being dropped on the ground, like this bar of soap. That just got picked up by someone. Are they going to keep it for themselves? Holbrick, he's a forager, shelter stocking. Hey, our park is done. Look at it. It's beautiful. Looks awesome. And then our trees, our little Via Flaminia is, is finished as well. Nice. This place is looking great. What are we up? We're almost up to 65. Hey, this one's already past 60, 65. So that means it can be upgraded to the next tier if we deliver three types of food. So that's really the focus for upgrading houses now into they become for their homesteads and they're going to become large houses. Um, so basically, in order to do that, we need three types of food and to deliver at least one candle or one pottery. So we've got plenty of pottery. They're all fine with that. Um, but it's going to be a bit of a struggle as we get stuff like we need bread, meat, and vegetables. Or vegetables, meat, and fruit. You know, just three types, essentially. Um, bread fits grains as a type of food, so that's one of the separate types. So, we've also got our pub up and running. This is our brewery. Now, the pub, the guy can't work it, Kazar, um, because obviously we're not making any beer. But we'll make beer as soon as we get the brewery up and running. So, this is really the next go-to project that we need to get done. And again, it's just a bit of a shortfall of planks constant, consistently. Let's increase this. Stocking the saw pit. We've got now four of these on the go. Four, eight, twelve people making planks. Villagers stricken with rabies. Uh-oh. A disease spread by a bite or a scratch from an infected animal. Now, having um, hide coats actually reduces the chances of getting rabies, but it looks like they were bitten. And it looks like it's all the way up by our gold mine. There may actually be a wolf den around this area. Normally when there's a collection of good resources, often when I've come across coal veins, we'll see a big wolf den. And you have to send... You can ma micromanage and send out a bunch of hunters. Oh my god, he's just been killed. Well, to be honest, I hate to say it, but he probably wasn't going to make it anyway. It's the guy with rabies, right? So, he dead. Died of combat. A disease spread by a bite or a scratch from an infected animal. Rabies, meaning rage, affects the brain, causing aggression, hallucinations, and eventually paralysis. It cannot be cured, and it's almost always fatal. Hide coats can protect villagers from bites, reducing the chance of contracting the disease. 22, man. Wasn't meant to be. We're losing them. They're dropping left, right, and center. That's four in total now we've lost. Two in the last year as well. Not good. The terrain is just being flattened yet again. And it was a wolf, yeah. We could build a tower here and it could also see what's going on. So basically, you can micromanage your hunters and send them out to go into a wolf den. I've done it before, and it did work. But um, the way you're really supposed to do is get your barracks up and running and tell them to go. Because they're meant to be done. They're like offensive fighters. Anyways, hey, we've got a new trader. Lethros of Cardell. And he's buying soap, candles, glassware, and medicine. And he's selling tools, weapons, iron ingots, heavy tools, and barrels. Interesting. We can help reduce the rate of spoilage. It's just, it's above the average price, and I don't really feel like we desperately need it. Not yet. And I think we could just make all of our own stuff with that. So as tempting as it is, I'm more in the game for selling stuff rather than buying right now. We can make our own tools. We can make our own heavy tools. We can make our own barrels. We're almost at the point of refining iron ore and stuff like that. So I think it's, I think we just don't really need to be rushing ahead and wasting gold on that. Ah, oh, look at this. Poop is gathering. So yeah, it's just like I thought. We need to get another um, compost yard, I think. So does this affect anyone if we kept it down here? Does that bother anybody? I might put another barn there. So this will have to come back to about somewhere about here. Maybe we could have a road coming down the left side. So let's just stick it right about there. We can always move it a tiny bit if we need to. Bring this road down. And maybe just cut one across so they can get out a bit more quickly. And just lead that straight out this way into the wilderness. Alright, so yeah, second compost yard. They probably just have to go so far. He's seeking food now as well. 
So let's have a look, actually. What does he spend much of his time doing? Transferring goods. I mean, that is the job, I suppose, going out and collecting poop. You can't really work at this building. You don't have to do anything. You just pile it all up. Basic needs. 7% of your time, you're getting your basic needs. So, yeah. I mean, that means you're basically working 92% of the time. So that's good. It just means that you're probably traveling a bit too far. There he is there. Collecting waste. Has to go all the way out here to gather poop from the farthest houses. So we'll just build one on the opposite side of the town. Makes sense to me. Let's just keep, keep at times two speed. I think that's a pretty good speed to keep. At the point we're at now. No fish in range. I don't believe you. Okay, plenty of fish. In the sea. Four people here stockpiling logs. They're still waiting on a few of these things to be built. Um, they're, that symbol means they're getting rid of the trees in the way. And then look at the temporary shelter up and running. And then we need a, a second wagon driver. So maybe another one here and probably another one further on the other side of the town. But again, I'm just short of planks. All these buildings require planks. If you were selling planks, I would definitely buy some. That would just speed us up immensely. But no. So let's see. This area has been flattened now again. Let's try gold. Yes, it looks like we can place it. Good. Heavy amounts of gold ore and iron ore. Nice, so we've got, let's say, four people working on iron. And then soon we'll start with the forge. I suppose we'll just put it down now, why not? Um, so the blacksmith. The foundry. So it requires ore and coal and refines it into iron ingots. Requires a heavy tool to be built, 250 gold, 30 stone, 25 planks. So I'm just going to put it down here temporarily. I'll probably end up sticking more industry out that way. But because we're going to be refining gold, I'd be a little scared about putting it outside the settlement to begin with. But there is coal made here, so at least that's a little quick. And then this just has to be brought in. Maybe we'll cut a road across this way too. Alright, nice. I'm really looking forward to seeing how much money we make when we start making gold bars. Actually, oh yeah, we'll just wait till we get the building. Then we can check the rates of everything. Typhoid. An infection arises from uncleanliness and can then be spread amongst villagers. Now, cleanliness is 80%. Pretty good. Who got it? This guy out here. Thoramin. 16 years old. What a strapping young man. Stay away from those other people, please. Uh, so, ensuring waste is collected from houses. Houses are stocked with soap and rat populations are kept low. will reduce typhoid. Yeah, so we do have a little bit of that creeping around here with some poop. Uh, so, actually, let's put this on a priority. This one's even more important than the refinery, I think. And the forge. Have we harvested any animals yet for the first time? No, we're at 12 out of 13, so we're waiting till next year. How's the farms? Let me just get refamiliarized. So our previous crop was... Oh, it's the current crop, sorry. The previous crop was 682, and we harvested even more than that. That's great. 727 beans. This one is 806 carrots planted, and we should be looking to get... Well, we currently have 776. We should be looking to get at least that 800 back then, even with the fertility at 70%. Which is surprising to me, actually. You'd think it'd be a little lower, because we're not at the good soil, either. An impending heat wave is coming. The winds have died down, and a period of sweltering heat has set in that could last for weeks. Ensure your town has adequate water supply, as villagers will need to draw more water from wells. Crops may be damaged, especially those sensitive to heat. And this will probably last one or two months, I think, in total. Two villagers born. I think our wells are fine, right? They're pretty much full. Yeah, I think we'll be okay, not to worry. And yeah, they're just leaving some carrots out like that. I hope things, food will spoil quicker, I guess, this way also. So 60% fertility, 72, 59, and 69. Okay, it's coming up a bit. Coming up a little bit. That's the same trader, I think. All right, let's check the village professions again. Just wait till we've got a few more. There we go. We've got room for more builders now. And we're still cranking out the logs. Well, actually, I'm, I'm still waiting for buildings to be done. There really isn't much else for me to do. And we're just waiting for upgrades. Like, this place is waiting for its stone to be delivered. And we've got logs out here. We're waiting just to gather more, much more stone and bring it all back in. So I suppose... Another um, wagon building would be good at this point. Might build one closer out this way, actually. So, that's a service building, isn't it? I think. Actually, not sure. 
A market, graveyard, a school, a rat catcher, and a healer's house. No, I do need another doctor, actually. Just to keep leaving time playing. I can never remember. Storage? There we go, storage. A wagon shop. That's also going to require a bunch of planks to even just get that stuff made. And then we'll have four people ferrying stuff around, and I'll build another one somewhere down around this way, a bit further out. And they can hopefully take care of the left side of the town. Be also good to maybe upgrade these roads just a little bit. And the bottleneck is building, which is an interesting bottleneck to have. Getting the building resources and getting things done on time. Harvest all that stone. We need so much stone to be brought in. Again, if I could purchase it, I would. No one's selling it at the moment. Uh, so this is set up. So this guy is out there collecting out. Thorman. Oh, is it our guy? It's actually a different Thorman, it looks like. Yeah, it is. He's much older. It's not the guy who had toy typhoid. Predator sighted. What do we got? A wolf. How many people are out here? Just the one. Just Oh, there's two people, actually. Can you take it down together, maybe? If there was three of you, I think you could. Let's get these together. We can do this. So you two go up and attack the wolf. I'll turn this guy around in a second. All right. All three together now. Oh, I have health bars turned off. Uh-oh. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. No, I'm so sorry. That's totally my fault. Wellesley. Ah. The immersion got me in the end, not seeing the health bars. I should have checked. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry, everybody. Man, they're dropping like flies. I had such a good, like, no deaths rate for so long. We went, like, what was it? Basically 14 years without a death, and then well, we've had like four in the space of two years. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, I let you down. The thing is, and I hate to say it, but um, deaths aren't really that important in this game. Something I really hope they add is like people getting a trait or getting like some experience as they get older, so that if they die, it's like ah, oh, that's a setback, you know. The only thing I can think of is education. That is a setback, losing someone with a little bit of education because not everyone has it. But if you just get, no one has any other traits. They're not specialized at the job. They don't become better at their job or anything like that. So losing someone just means like, oh, you just lost, you know, one pair of hands. But it's so easy to get more people in the game. They just arrive when there's like, oh my God, when there's like room in the houses, you know? So I hate to say, but when I, in one of my saves, I have a game of like 250 people when I was streaming it. And I think something like 10 of them died in a raid. And then like eight people just arrived in like in an immigration event right after the raid. And I was like, oh, let's just completely replace all the people that died then. So I hate to say it. I obviously don't want to lose anyone, especially for the immersion aspect. But it's not as bad as you may think. But I, I consider it a personal failure for sure, having people die of not natural causes like that. Anyway, we have our second uh, wagon shop up and running. They got to actually make the wagons, which take a little bit of time, and then they'll get rolling out. So they'll be busy doing that for a little bit. Can't get over the amount of planks we need. It's crazy. I'm just constantly needing planks. I am loving our little road here, though. It is so cozy. That leads you down to the other village. These houses are coming along very nicely indeed, I must say. And our lovely park on the side. There must have been, yeah, that big fire. Everyone gathered buckets of water to help put it out. Now, these houses have still got a lot of crap piling up in there. Can we, can we like, focus those? Let's see where he goes after. He's heading up. He went up some other direction. Collecting waste. Goes straight to this one. Let's see how much is in there. <laughs> oh, my God. 50. That, white, that wheelbarrow is full. That's 2%. 50 is 2%, apparently. Wow. Alright, cool. Well, at least things are pretty good. <laughs> if it wasn't for that wolf. But, you know, things are pretty good. And at least now we've got... Should have a bit more of a steady supply of stone coming in. Uh, we could even... Ex oh, there's even more out there. Nice. Yeah, I was going to say, just explore a little bit further. Maybe right in the edges of this area here. Seems to be a second lake down this way. And a little cut through. God, this lake is massive. I wonder is the center going to fill in when we, if we get all the way around it. It'd be a little frustrating if we don't, because who knows? It could be an island out here. wonder will they ever add little boats and stuff, maybe. Still haven't made any beer yet, but the brewery is up and running. Unable to work. You're unable to work, or are you unwilling? 
So why would that be? They require honey, which they've got. No grain in here. They have water and wood. So, no grain. Grain will be done in three months. Yeah, uh, if we just check our different things. Yeah, so they're not being used. So obviously the mill is going to be using grain, but so will, and so will the cattle, and so will the brewery. But I think we'll make more than enough beer with one brewery for one pub. Two villagers immigrated. I know that they're idle, but it's okay. Let them skive off. Let them think they've got one over on the boss. Keeps morale up. Looks like we've got rats out this way as well. Rodents. Yeah, rats are starting to spread. So we have a rat catcher out on the left side of the town, but not on the right. So I guess we'll pop one of those down again. A rat catcher. Somewhere out here, I suppose, would be good. Yeah, we can cover... We can basically cover that market, cover the food storehouse here. Of course, we have our root cellars now upgraded, looking swanky. I think they look so good. The upgraded buildings actually look so good. I wonder what the um, the cobble can be upgraded and it can change its appearance. I don't know what that would look like, though. It needs 15 bricks. Don't want to waste our bricks on that just yet, but soon enough. And speaking of, we can get our own brick makers. Let's do that now. So that's our brewery. We have our furniture workshop, foundry blacksmith and then brickyard so coal and clay making bricks more planks more stone required I was gonna put it somewhere around here because of course oh it actually does hurt desirability so put it further out so excuse me a barn is gonna go there we could put the brick in sideways oh, it doesn't fit really could just put it there again temporary you could always move it just want to check that the second barn fits because I have a feeling that we might have problems with this one so a barn would fit there. It's four across in grid spaces. Four. Okay. And this is four as well. Oh, unfortunately that means we can't put them together. So I'll have to stick this somewhere a bit further down. Yeah, this is a four by four actually. Another villager attacked by a predator. God damn. And this is seven across and seven that way. Uh, if we get any closer, we'll start affecting these houses. Oh, we can actually shift it right here and it doesn't affect them. I'll put it down here. I know it's a little bit further. It's not too far, though. And there's actually coal out that way and everything. So I think we'll be okay. But yeah, there's going to be a bit more of a reorganization happening. We need to do another big expansion. But I'm just holding off for a little while. Of course, if I move this and move this, you know, there's going to be plenty of room. But i got to think about where these houses are going to expand to next. Because there's lots of room. Desirability is going to be in a circle around the market and around that house. Or the uh, school. So we still got some room around the edges. And still some room further back into town to add a few more houses in there too. Alright, we'll let time speed up. We can upgrade the stockyard. Can we upgrade these things yet? So they actually require iron ingots. Now we have our blacksmith up and running. And there we go. We'll put four people on that because we are indeed making gold ingots and iron. A hundred gold ingots. Holy crap. I thought it was going to be like the opposite. You get like a load of iron, but not many, much gold. So for five gold ore, you get a hundred gold ingots? Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Fine by me. And do we have the iron, or, uh, the gold mine up? We do. Get in there. So you're fighting. It's village attacked by predator. Irani. Being attacked by a boar. She's... Maybe run away. Yeah? Maybe don't be a hero. Oh my god, you're so dead. The hunter's out fighting it, though. He's missing, like, every shot. Is that Demar? Deming. He's retreating straight away. So he's like, yeah, fuck this. How's his health? His health is fine. He can handle it. He's got the extra... You get a little bit of extra health being a hunter and, a, and being in a watchtower as well. So he's got it. He's got it taken care of. What a coward, though. Running away. Because he missed a few of his arrow shots. Uh, some people asked, what's this little icon mean? The barrel above buildings? It just means storage is full. Which in some ways could be worse. Um, but this is mostly just clay stored up in here. Which is funny, considering the bricks and stuff should really be stored down here. Maybe we'll get a second stockyard, actually, thinking about it. So they don't have to travel too far with that. Um, so storage... We need a stockyard. I think a regular storehouse can carry clay as well, though, can't it? Let me just check. No, apparently not. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't actually know that. I know that this is construction material, but I didn't really think about it from the bricks perspective. So, yeah, we'll just stick it down here. That should save some time. These roads need to change. Everything needs to change in this corner. 
All right, let's check on these farms. We're about a month and a half away from grain. A month and a half away from our cabbage. Clover, raising the fertility. And getting rid of more weeds. So we're going to go through a period of pretty high weeds still while we get carrots and grain. And then try to get rid of as many as we can the year after. So yeah, it seems fairly decently laid out. Not, not too many problems that I can see straight away. This root cellar has a um, problem with rats also. So this is our rat catcher. Just stick it around like there. We, could we get it all the We can't get both involved. They're just too far away from each other, the two root cellars. So I'll leave it like there. Maybe we could just move this root cellar then. Um, closer in range of maybe this thing. So yeah. I'll say move this one. Stick it in sideways here. It's not really needed there anymore, to be honest. Probably not even storing that much stuff, thinking about it. This area still isn't done. I can't get over how long that's taking. We get a priority on that just because it's bothering me now. I'm guessing the stone is just a bit too far away for them. There's two stone in this. We'll have to send it out and start harvesting another area soon. We can also upgrade... Hey, we've finally gotten some iron because we're now able to upgrade our hunter cabins. So doing that gives you additional item recipes. So I've seen this. This basically gives you the ability to do trapping. So when you hover over your radius, you can see that trapping has two little green arrows next to it, the one below deer. Um, I don't know what trapping, what they necessarily trap. Is it big animals, small animals? Like, it could be bears, right? I, before all I know, but it could also just be rabbits or something. I'm not really too sure. Um, but it actually requires a consistent supply of iron. So I don't want to do that just yet. I feel like we need a bit more iron coming in before we do. I want to put iron to construction use first and then we'll give it for the regular upkeep. Um, so yeah, firewood splitters can now be upgraded. They cost 20 bricks and 5 iron. What about these? This is 15 iron. So I want to upgrade the sawmills because that's what we're lacking. We're slowly bringing it up though. Alright, let's check professions again. What's the situation? 8 builders, 9 laborers. That's pretty good, I think. Let's bring this down to about 12 in total. Oops. There we go. 11 laborers. We're up to 183 people in total. Happiness has come almost all the way back up. So that's pretty good. Food is could be a little bit better, but we're, we're getting better with it. And uh, yeah, I didn't make a smoker out here. It'd be tempting to do that. Just because they could smoke the fish straight away, maybe, and then deliver it to the temporary shelter. I don't know if that's how quickly they do things, but you'd hope they do. So let's do food production. What's one extra smoker, you know? So have we um, ventured any further? Not yet. We're still waiting on free people to be able to do that. I'm not seeing any coal. That's really what I'm looking out for. Because, um, yeah, we still only ever found one deposit. Now, did we ever set that deposit up? I don't think so. There's a work camp out here where they're mining stone. When they're done with that, which is... it's all Are they done, actually? I think they basically are. Um, we can now set up that coal mine, which is somewhere just down here, isn't it? I actually can't see it now. Am I blind? I think I probably am. There is iron ore here, 637. I was so sure it was just like right here. Hmm. I'm sorry, I'll probably notice where it is next episode or something or in between, but there was... I feel like it's... well, I guess this is the best way to finding it. Um, just go to resources, click your coal mine. There we go, it is right there. It's just not showing it to me for some reason as an icon. The icons are on, so yeah. Anyway, yeah, let's just go with a coal mine right around here. Oh, look, the icon's like flashing in. There we go. Okay, I'm not crazy. It is supposed to be there. And I'll just build a little road that extends down that way. All right, two more villagers born. Good. How you guys liking the town? Are we happy with it? Is the layout good? I've kept the old town. As some people said, it'd be kind of cool to keep the old style and then have the new kind of um, more organized style. Those guys don't have a pub, actually. It might end up moving some of these houses out. And actually, I do need to move a house out. I want to move this one because I want to relocate the doctor and upgrade them to be a bit better. Um, so I'm just going to pop this guy down this way. And then we'll take the doctor's house, which is out here, and move that to that spot. It's still the same amount of size, so it should be fine. Any traders coming by lately? Nothing for a while. You're just leaving gold ore at the gate. Are you mad? 
They're still building those wagons. Good god, they take a while, don't they? So what have you done so far? We've made 10 iron. We haven't made any gold ingots just yet, though. Villager stricken with worms. Parasitic worms can lead to varying... Uh, various symptoms including stomach pain, vomiting, fever, rashes, etc. Worms are spread by close contact or through bare feet. Ensure villagers have shoes, soap, clean water. Now, you've got no clothing apparently. Although well, you are a kid. Holo. Hmm. I don't know how I can check the rate of goods and materials. Usable goods, shoes. 21 produced, 19 consumed. So, I mean, we should have enough. Soap, 52 produced, 56 consumed. Hmm, maybe not enough soap then. We could get, we could increase the amount of soap we have. Oh, nice, look at this. The amount of iron we've made, we can now upgrade these things. So yeah, let's upgrade our first saw pit. Why not? The upgrade costs one heavy tool, actually. Uh, just before we do that, we need a tool maker, so we're actually making our own heavy tools. A blacksmith's forge requires iron ingots and coal to produce weapons, tools, and heavy tools. 250 gold. So we actually don't need iron to make the building, so that's good. So yeah, again, just probably going to move this a bit later, but I'm just going to stick it down wherever. I know that might make some people mad, but that's just what's going to have to happen. Because I said so. Alright. So yeah, let's upgrade this building as well. So that's going to become a, whatever, a heavy sawmill, or a saw pit. And we can kind of check the differences. So additional... Workers, a bonus item production speed increase, and they'll use heavy tools in that building, where they can. Uh, we can also upgrade the storehouse here. It is pretty central, and there's a lot of stuff here, so I'm going to do that. Villager cured. Holo overcame the worms. Gotta stop picking her nose. That's what's going on there. Alright, our work camp. So I think we're getting low on population now. In terms of, yeah, people out there available to do things. 14 people are building, even though I only have 10 in total available. But that's whatever. But we can maybe salvage this other saw pit and just have two upgraded ones. And they'd look better and do better. Uh, we could probably reduce down things that are a bit excessive. You know, maybe like extra pottery is probably not that needed. We have the brewery now working. Is the pub stocked? It looks like it is. Entertainment being provided. Let's just move this over. So we can see to all the houses it's affecting. Awesome. Current entertainment value 100%. This building provides entertainment to nearby occupied residences and increases happiness within your town. To maximize its influence, place this building within 65 meters of 10 residences. There are currently 17 residences in range. Also, if this pub runs out of beer for more than 30 days, it'll stop generating entertainment. Keep producing beer and keeping your patrons happy. So we produced 10 beer and we've generated 8 gold from that. It's been idle 78% of the time. That's just last year because it didn't have stuff. But he's distributing beer now. He's working, working well. So, things that we could do. We could do stuff like that. Well, I can't actually access that now. But I was going to say toggle off storing beer. And just now toggle on storing beer here. So that way we keep things kind of localized to where they need to go. Um, it's on by default, so I don't have to do anything there. So next year, I want to see if we actually start slaughtering. That's going to be the big question. And then if we don't... We'll set up another barn. Even if we do, we can set up another barn. I wouldn't mind trading and just buying more animals if we get the opportunity to do so. No trader here at the moment. I put down a couple little gardens and some extra plaza here to make the place look like it's all one as well, which I think looks nice. How's this winter? Cold temp, moderate breeze. And we can check all of the items we currently have in stock. 228 coal, 17 gold ore. 66 iron ore. A thousand clay almost in total. One of the episodes previous I said, oh, we don't have any willow, but it is right there. I thought it was um like a, a green resource. Yeah, everything looks good. We've got a decent variety of stuff. We just need more of it to sustain the variety for all the houses. Because we got berries, we have meat, vegetables, bread, fish, smoked meat, smoked fish, um fruit and greens so maybe even more smokers might be ideal we have one out here S smoking away we've got two here helping smoke food and then we now have the new one that's being built out this way all right year 17 we're flying ahead 
Another livestock animal has been born? Just the one, which sounds good, because it is supposed to be two. So I'm guessing just the one counts as being born. It says population 13 out of 13. We'll see what happens. There's rats, apparently, in there. But the rat catcher does cover that building, so catch some rats, please. Better than you are right now. So we have dysentery and typhoid again. So typhoid, waste collection, houses being stocked with soap. Dysentery, without clean water, that can happen. Hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, maybe we'll build a well out th this way. We learned that last time about dehydration. No harm in having it. Because they might be getting water from the, the lake or something. That could be what's going on there. So we won't see it for a while, but we should see if these guys are going to be butchering meat. Herd size 13 out of 13. Maybe we did just give birth to the one instead of two. It did say two. Well, let's test it. Let's try slaughter one. Let's see if this works. Slaughter one, 500 meat, 10 pelt, 12 tallow. Confirm. But yeah, I think we got an issue. Basically, when you click that, one of these should go to butchering meat almost immediately, and they're not doing that. Hmm. Let me set the grazing to be a bit closer. We can actually see the patch of fertility we've created out there. We didn't really create one similarly over this side, which I was hoping for. A bee sting? <laughs> a bee sting can cause a villager to have an allergic reaction. Oh no. A healer will greatly improve their chances of recovery. Quick, run to the healer. Seeking medicine. I actually have to move that house, but I'll, I guess I'll wait until they're done. We need to put it in this gap. Food stocks are low. The smoker is full. Yes, I am concerned. All right, we'll try this again. Slaughter. Yeah, look, your herd is overpopulated. Oh, I knew this would happen. Confirm. What we're going to need is another barn. Shelter stocking. Eh, that's not what we need to do. So we need another barn. Again, this game is just a little bit buggy, I guess. But we need another barn. We could transfer them into the other one, and then they'll be slaughtered in the other one. That's our little workaround. Unless we get the other one bugged, in which case... That might be GG for this save, to be honest. So I don't want to continue if a whole industry is just off. You know, it doesn't work. But we'll see. Let's not jump to conclusions just yet. Uh, so yeah, let's just stick it here. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. We can put the grazing outside anyway. So that's a hundred planks. It's a lot of planks. Villager cured from the bee sting. All right, let's just move this building then. She has another ailment of her own. I might wait till she's cured. Typhoid. Oh, another trader. Nice. Let's just quickly do our last trade for this evening. So they're buying weapons, furniture, candles, iron ingots, glassware, heavy tools, plate mail, and that's it. Plate mail. Wow. You can't. E I didn't even think you could make plate mail. I thought you have to purchase it. Oh wow, they're selling spices. I've never. I don't know. Oh, who is this? Masake the silver tongue. Ooh, cheese spices, flour of course, medicine, hauberks, which is basically like a plate mail armor, and wheat. Gonna have to say no this time around as well. Unfortunately, we're looking to sell our stuff first. Oh yeah, did we make any gold yet? There is some outside. Yeah, we made 300. God damn, look at that. Awesome, we're rich. We're super rich. We need to get a vault. A vault is a building that will store that gold. That's actually really important now. <laughs> Especially if we're gonna have a big gold industry. We can put it right at the back of the um, trader. So storage, vault, there it is. 20 ingots and 40 stone. Big thick church, you know, chapel looking building. We could just stick it right in there. We could have two if we really wanted to. It's, they store weapons as well, so it's not just gold. So I might do it just right, right there. Building abandoned. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. It was a homestead. They don't have the correct desirability. That's all right. So the last thing to do then, I'm just going to queue this up right now. Just move this doctor's office over there. That should just be a little closer to some other people too and less far for people to travel to get out to it. They get to stay on the main road to be able to do that. Um... And then we need to raise desirability, so we could maybe move this house over here. Should be a bit better, because they're closer to the pub and stuff. 
All right, so clay and sand. So yeah, this one doesn't need to store any clay in future. It's pointless. And I guess that's going to be it. So pretty straightforward episode. We're just kind of progressing slowly through into tier 3. I really want to get our first large houses built, but that just requires providing these guys with three types of food. Food is just a little bit of a struggle, but we're almost getting on top of it. Once we start get, you know, if we're able to actually harvest our meat, damn it, and then maybe build a couple extra farms, we'll be golden. Now these, um, something I didn't focus on, we produced 100 fruit last year and 131, so fruit is coming up nicely. We just need to actually preserve it. Um, and the amount of berries and stuff that we're getting is still really good. So yeah, things are pretty good. A little bit of sickness creeping around, although we are making soap. Um, and then we're about to start making... Ah, they don't have a heavy tool. We must have just run out. Because they do burn through them eventually. As far as I've seen, this will say 100% and never change, and then eventually it just runs out. So you don't actually get to see the number trickle down. Eventually it'll just tell you, Hey, I'm out of heavy tools. I can no longer make blah blah blah. Which can be devastating, to be honest. Um... Because it could just undercut your economy pretty badly. You know, no no wheat, suddenly you've got no bread. Suddenly you're not feeding, uh, making money through the pub and stuff like that. It could be really bad. Look at our income now, 160, 177. Manufacturing plus 100. I guess every month that you make a gold bar. Or 100 gold bars, it just kind of adds it to the actual income up there. <laughs> Looks really good. Alright, that's going to have to be it for this episode. So our industry is underway. We have extra wagons heading out. We have gold coming in, iron coming in. We're forging it. Oh, and we've just improved our... Look at this. The saw pit. Level 2 out of its mind. Looking beautiful. We're going to have to start harvesting far more wood, though, because no doubt we're getting a little low. All right. Like I said, that's going to be it. Looking forward to seeing the feedback and how we're, you know, how people think we're doing, how you think the town's shaping up. If you've got suggestions or things you'd like me to add or place around or go and do, absolutely leave it in the comments, and I'll try to get to it in the next one. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing, and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.